Welcome back to Postgres for MySQL DBAs. My name is Dave Stokes. I'm a technology evangelist for Percona Corporation. And this is episode six on explaining explain. Now this is a series for MySQL DBAs who want to explore Postgres. Uh, you've probably heard a lot of stuff about Postgres, but it's a little difficult to set up the first time. And this is kind of a guided effort to show you how to do all that and walk you through some of the, some of the trickier things that are a little bit different. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but MySQL and Postgres do have their differences and I want to show those off to you so you won't stumble over them. So this is a episode on explain, explain, or what your server wants to do to get you your data. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at why explains around, explain Postgres is explain, and use explain. Now, what does explain do? Well, the explain statement returns the execution plan, which is what Postgres's planner generates on a given statement. You send it a query, and it returns you what it wants to do to get your, your data. Now, it's going to show you uh, what tables are involved and how they're brought into the, the mix and how they're used, what sort of algorithms and all that. And the most important and useful information is the, the costs. There is a start cost, uh, which is before the first row is even grabbed, and the total cost. So you get the total cost of everything plus what it takes to get that started. Now, if you're looking for a great tutorial, I recommend postgrestutorial.com, where I looked at this uh, three paragraphs from. Now, I cannot teach the mechanics of explain. That is much more than a short video can teach. My goal here is just to teach you the difference between what MySQL does and what Postgres does. Now, in the MySQL world, we're used to prepending the keyword explain in front of a query. Here's a simple query, select name from city, where district equals Texas, order by name. Over here in the green, we're going to get some details. This is what the optimizer's uh, checklist to see how it can go out and do stuff. And knows we're working on the table city. It uh, wants to make itself aware of any keys on the table. Well, there are no keys in the table, so um, there's no possible key it could use. And it does know that there's 4,188 rows out there. And in the, uh, I guess that's kind of a teal or a Ramsey blue top part, this is the actual query that MySQL run where it has the, the database name, the table name, and the column name that we're pulling back from the database server. Now, the syntax between the two are just a little different. The same idea, you uh, prepend explain to a statement, uh, same with Postgres. Uh, big differences is you have the format types of traditional JSON and tree in MySQL. And in Postgres, we have text, which is like the traditional XML, JSON, and YAML. Now, for the Postgres world, there's other things you can go out there, uh, verbose, cost, settings, buffers, wide head log, uh, the timings. Now, MySQL added the analyze statement also. I think that was 818, 8018. This will actually run the query until you uh, put in analyze. It's all based on historical information, which may or may not be good. Hopefully it is. So if you want to actually run the query, uh, which has its own set of uh, problems there that I won't go into today, um, on either of those, you add the keyword analyze. So. Let's create two tables, uh, table T1, T2. Uh, both have a, one column, ID, ID. The first one has a serial data type, and it's going to be marked as the primary key. Second one just has ID as an integer, not null. Into both tables, we generate uh, 1 to 100,000 numbers and feed those in the tables. And we have two tables we want to take a look at. Now, if we run the same query, select the first column from that table where the ID equals 101. When there's no index, we're going to have a sequential scan, full table scan. And when there is an index, it's going to read that information just from the index. It's not diving into the data itself. It's just going to read that off the index. Now, the two numbers to watch are the planning time, 0.054 milliseconds for no index versus 0.469 milliseconds for the index. So you can see using index has a little bit of a cost. But if you look at the overall time, 5.6 versus 0 0.110. Uh, pay more attention to the general execution time. 
Now, how do you read the output of this? It's just different enough from my skill to kind of make you scratch your head. Well, this area over here is called the node type. You'll see different ones uh, later queries. So the node for this uh, action on this table is that we're going to be using a, a key on table T1. It's the primary key or P key on table one. That's the index we're using. There is the two costs, the, the startup time and the total execution time. This is the row of output for this query, not this query. This is the output of this query, these two. So you can kind of ignore that for, for right now. Now, if you want format JSON, which gives you a little more information, such as whether the query is parallel to where or async capable, uh, you put in parentheses format JSON, not format equals JSON. And if you want XML, or YAML, uh, just change the, the format condition. Now for subqueries, it's kind of interesting. Uh, here we're gonna do a subquery on the address table, which here you see in dark blue. And down here we see that we're gonna do a sequential scan on this table. And we're gonna feed all that information into the outer query, uh, customer here in red. And it's gonna do an index scan on what comes through on that. Now, there's a bonus question for you folks. If we put an index on this column here, would this speed up this query or not? Uh, how big is the bump in startup cost? Does it reduce the overall time for the entire query? Does it reduce the overall time for either the subquery or the outer query? Uh, leave your answer and your comments on the uh, YouTube page for this episode. And if you have an answer that I like and we meet up at a future conference or somewhere, I'll make sure you get some very exciting proponent swag. Now for multiple joints, it's just a little different. Uh, here we have a three table query. We're going to select stuff from film F, do an inner join on the table film actor, and then do an inner join on the table actor. And you'll see that in this case, uh, we're going to have a hash join. And our condition for the join is this stuff in red. Remember, hashes have to be an equal equi join. That's the equal sign here between these two columns. That gets uh, put into what I like to think of a pile with the hash condition stuff from uh, the blue here. Film ID equals film ID. And that in turn is another hash join with what we get from film. Now, normally I do a video demo, but this is a fairly simple uh, topic, at least at this level that we're doing. So I'm not gonna show you me actually typing the queries. That's gonna be kind of boring for you. But uh, next time we are going to uh, let you decide what the subject wants to be. I wanna talk about vacuuming, I wanna talk about security, I wanna talk about replication, all this other stuff. But what do you want to see? Please leave me feedback on the YouTube comments for this episode or send me something on Twitter at Stoker. And with that, I want to thank you for watching this. See you next time.